a British philippic mark Akenside occasioned by the insults of the Spaniards, and the present preparations for war, 1738. Whence this unwanted transport in my breast? Why glow my thoughts, and whither would the muse aspire with rapid wing? Her country's cause demands her efforts. At that sacred call she summons all her ardor, throws aside the trembling lyre, and with the warrior trump she means to thunder in each British ear. And if one spark of courage, sense of fame, disdain of insult, dread of infamy, one thought if public virtue yet survive, she means to wake it, rouse the generous flame, with patriot zeal and spirit every breast, and fire each British heart with British wrongs. Alas the vain attempt! What influence now can the muse boast? Or what attention now is paid to fame and virtue? Where is now the British spirit, generous, warm and brave, so frequent known from tyranny and woe to free the suppliant nations? Where, indeed? If that protection, once to strangers given, be now withheld from sons? Each kindling thought that warmed our sires, is lost, in luxury and avenue rice. Beneful vice. How it unmends a nation. Yet I'll try, I'll aim to shake this vile degenerate sloth. I'll dare to rouse Britannia's dreaming sons to fame, to virtue, and impart around a generous feeling of compatriot woes. Come then the various pal single quotares of forceful speech. All that can charm, awaken, fire, transport. Come the bold ardor of the Theban bard. Th arousing thunder of the patriot Greek. The soft persuasion of the Roman sage. Come all. And raise me to an equal height, a rapture worthy of my glorious cause. Lest my best efforts failing should debase the sacred theme. For with no common wing the muse attempts to soar. Yet would need these. My country's fame, my freeborn British heart shall be my best inspirers, raise my flight high as the Theban's pinion, and with more than Greek or Roman ardor fire my soul, and animate my numbers. Were there words expressive of the thoughts that glow within, oh! Could I give the vast ideas birth, no more should lazy luxury detain our martial youth? No more should Britain's sons sit meanly passive, and regardless hear the prayers, sighs, groans, immortal infamy. Of fellow Britons, with oppression sunk, in bitterness of soul demanding aid, calling on Britain their dear native land, the land of liberty. So greatly famed for just redress. The land so often deed with her best blood, for that arousing cause, the freedom of her sons. Those sons that now, far from the blessings of her easy sway, drag the vile fetters of a Spanish lord. And dare they, dare the vanquished sons of Spain enslave a Briton. Have they then forgot, so soon forgot the great, th immortal day, when rescued Sicily with joy beheld the swift-winged thunder of the British arm disperse their navies. When their coward bands fled, like the raven from the bird of Jove, from dread impending vengeance fled in vain? Are these our lords? And can Britannia see her foes, oft vanquished, thus defy her pal single quotar, insult her standard, and enslave her sons? Yet not to rise to justice? Did our sires, honored by chains, by exile, or by death, preserve inviolate her guardian rights, and sacred even to Britons? that their sons should give them up to Spaniards? Turn your eyes, turn ye dug and raid, who with haughty boast call yourselves Britons, to that dismal gloom, that dungeon dark and deep, where never thought of joy or peace can enter. See the gates harsh creaking open. What an hideous void, dark as the yawning grave. While still as death a frightful silence reigns, there on the ground behold your brethren, chained like beasts of prey, their martyr numerous glories. There behold the look that speaks unutterable woe. The mangled limb, the faint, the deathful eye with famine sunk, the deep heart bursting grunt suppress in silence. View the loathsome food, refused by dogs, and oh! The stinging thought. View the dark Spaniard glorying in their wrongs, the deadly priest triumphant in their woes, and thundering worse damnation on their souls, while that pale form in all the pangs of death, too faint to speak yet eloquent of all his native British spirit yet untamed, raises his head, and with indignant frowns of great defiance, and superior scorn, looks up and dies, oh! I am all on fire. But let me spare the theme, 
lest future times should blush to hear that either conquered Spain durst offer Britain such outrageous wrong, or Britain tamely bore it. Descend, ye guardian heroes of the land. Scourges of Spain, descent. Behold your sons. See. How they run the same heroic race, how prompt, how ardent in their country's cause, how greatly proud to assert their British blood, and in their deeds reflect their father's fame. Ah! Would to heaven! Ye did not rather see how dead to virtue, in the public cause. How cold, how careless, how to glory deaf, they shame your laurels, and belie their birth. Come, ye great spirits, Ka-Indish, Raleigh, Blake. And ye of later name your country's pride, oh! Come, disperse these lazy fumes of sloth, teach British hearts with British fires to glow. In wakening whispers rouse our martial youth, blazon the triumphs of your better days, paint all the glorious scenes of rightful war in all its splendors. To their swelling souls say, how ye batiach insulting Spaniards pride, say how ye thundered o'er their prostrate heads, say how ye broke their lines, and furred their ports. Say how not death in all its frightful shapes could damp your souls, or shake the great resolve for right and Britain, then display the joys the patriot's soul exulting, while he views transported millions hail with loud acclaim the guardian of their civil, sacred rights, how greatly welcome to the virtuous man to fall for others' good. The radiant thoughts that beam celestial on his passing soul, th unfading crowns awaiting him above, th exalting plaudit of the great supreme who in his actions with complacence views his own reflected image. Then descend thou to a lower, yet a noble scene. Pain the just honors to his relics paid, shew grateful millions weeping o'er his grave. While his fair fame in each progressive age forever brightens. And the wise and good of every land and universal choir with richest incense of undying praise is urn and circle, to the wondering world his numerous triumphs blazon. While with awe, with filial reverence in his steps they tread, and copying every virtue, every fame, transplant his glories into second life, and with unsparing hand make nations blessed by his example. Vast, immense rewards. For all the turmoils which th heroic mind encounters here. Yet, Britons, are ye cold, yet deaf to glory, virtue, and the call of your dear, wronged, insulted country? No, I see ye are not. Every bosom glows with native greatness, and in all its state the British spirit rises, glorious change. Fame, virtue, freedom, welcome. Oh! Forgive the muse that ardent in her sacred cause your glory questioned, she beholds with joy, she owns, she triumphs, in her wished mistake. See! From her sea beat throne in awful march Britannia to single quo tares. Upon her laurelled caress the plume's majestic nod. Behold! She heaves her guardian shield, and terrible in arms for battle shakes her adamantine spear, loud at her foot the British lion roars, frighting the nations. Haughty Spain full soon shall hear and tremble. Go then, Britons, forth, your country's daring champions. Tell your foes, tell them in thunders o'er their bending land you were not born for slaves, let all your deeds shew that the sons of those immortal men, the stars of shining story, are not slow in honor's path to emulate their sires, to assert their country's rights, to guard her sons, to hurl the bolts of justice on her foes, and with new laurels crown the British fame.